Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the session. This is a session for algorithmic verification one. And in the session, we are going to have three talks. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, uh, in the session, we're going to have uh, three talks. And uh, our first speaker is Yuan Bo Li, and uh, he will be talking to us about uh, efficient algorithms for dynamic bidirected dichroitability. Yeah, Yuan Bo, go ahead, please. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. So let me first share the Hi, this is Yuan Po. I'm presenting the paper, Efficient Algorithms for Dynamic Bide of Dichroitability. This is joint work with Chris Satter and Professor Chen Zhang from Georgia Tech. In modern software development, it is common that we want certain analysis of the data with code changes. We motivate the study of dynamic bide to dichroitability using a static ABS analysis example. The ABS analysis is to decide whether two variables can be ABS to each other. Consider the following program. Suppose we want to decide whether the variable A and variable E uh, can refer to the same memory location. The typical treatment for this ABS analysis is to formulate it as a bide to dichroitability problem. The analysis extracts a bidirect graph from the given program. In this reachability graph, nodes represent variables and edges represent the value flows in the original programs. The open parentheses edge labels represent the field axes, and the closed parentheses represent the field assignments. The question of whether variable A and variable E are edges becomes whether there exists a dike pass between node A and node E. So a pass, for example, this pass, is a dike pass if the edge labels along the pass form a word in the dike language. The dike language has the following grammar, which represents the set of all matched parentheses strings. In the modern software development, we want to keep the analysis results up to date with code changes. Suppose we delete uh, these two lines of code in this program. The program graph should be updated correspondingly. Then the analysis needs the updated result for the bidirected dichroitability. Instead of recomputing the bidirected dichroitability result for this analysis from scratch, it is more efficient to have a dynamic algorithm which can exploit the previous dichroitability result and maintain the result over edge insertions and deletions in the input graphs. Bidirected dichroitability problem has been extensively studied in the literature, and different approaches to compute the bidirected dichroitability have been proposed. For a graph with n nodes and n edges, its optimal algorithm has been shown to have a O-N complexity. Considering that the optimal static algorithm already has a linear running time and can be used as a naive approach to recompute the dichroitability for dynamic edge update, it is challenging to design a dynamic algorithm which is better than the static algorithms in both theoretical running time and in practice. Our contribution is to propose the efficient dynamic algorithm for bidirected type reachability. The proposed algorithms have, a, have an asymptotically faster running time than the static version in comparison with the uh, OM complexity using the naive approach, which compute the result from, from scratch using the optimal static algorithms. Uh, it has a, our proposed algorithm has an ON running time for the edge insertions and O and alpha and running time for the edge deletions. Where alpha is the inverse, inverse optimal function, which really can be regarded as a constant in practice. In addition, our algorithms have no redundant computation for maintaining the dichroitability results. 
here we introduce the insight of our approach for dynamic wide edge reachability. And because a single edge update may affect the reachability result for programming number of node pairs, the first thing we need to consider is to pick a succinct representation of the problem. As we described earlier, the naive dynamic reachability algorithm already has a OM component. So uh, we have to have a succinct representation. We use the merge graph as the representation. Merge graphs exploit the special equivalence relation of dike reachability in bidirectional graphs. Nodes that are dike reachable to each other can be collapsed into a single node in the merge graph. For example, consider the following bidirectional graph. For, for brevity, we only present the open parentheses edges and omit the corresponding closed parentheses edges in the following slides. After applying the bidirectional dike reachability algorithm, we can obtain the following merge graph. The nodes that are merged into the same node are diagrammable to each other. For example, this node AE are merged together, which basically means that in the original graph, from node A to node E, there is a type class. Then, in the merge graph, for edge insertion, the dynamic algorithm only needs to add the inserted edge into the merge graph and apply the original static bidirectional diagrammability algorithm. For edge deletions, the dynamic algorithm becomes more complicated and challenging. Upon an edge deletion, the dynamic algorithm needs to split nodes in the merge graph, which become no longer dike-reachable in the graphs. If a node is split during the dynamic algorithm, it should not be merged back. Otherwise, the computation is redundant, and we regard it as a redundant computation for the dynamic algorithm. The goal here is to design a dynamic edge deletion algorithm with no redundant computation. So the challenge in design of such an algorithm is to identify the precise condition on how the algorithm can and should split the uh, nodes. Otherwise, it will introduce redundant computations. We first gain some intuition from a simple example. Consider the graph and its merge graph. We delete the edge from node B to node C in this graph. Then the node B and node D are no longer dike reachable. Thus, the algorithm should split node B and node D. Similarly, because node A and node E are no longer dike reachable in the original graph, we should also split the node A and the node E. The first operation is that we will recursively split on the parent nodes in the merge graph until we encounter nodes that we cannot split, basically. So what's the precise condition to decide whether we can split the nodes? The first insight is to associate a weight attribute to the edges in the merge graph. The weight of an edge in the merge graph is the number of weights and number of edges represent in the original graph. An edge with weight greater than one is basically the necessary condition for a dike class. So let's go back to the previous example. We re relabel the edges with the uh, merge in the merge graph with these weights. When we delete the open two edge from node B to node C, the weight of the edge in the merge graph changes to one. Because we only represent one edge, the open the open two edge from node B to node C now, then there are no outgoing edges for node B D with weight greater than one. This indicates that there is no dike path between node B D in the original graph. Thus, this node BD should be split. After the splitting, notice that all the outgoing edges of node AE have just weight 1. Thus, node AE should also be split. Then we get the previous result of this updated graph. From the previous example, the intuition is that we can split the node if 
it has no outgoing address with weight greater than 1. However, this intuition is not the precise condition for the splitting, and let's simply just consider another example. Still, suppose we delete the edge from node D to node B, then the weight of the corresponding edge in the merge graph changes to 2. Notice that there exists no die class between node A and node D in the original graph. Thus, we still need to split this node ACDF, even though it has outgoing edges with weight greater than greater or equal to 2. In fact, the node ACDF will be split into node AC and node DF. Well, what's the precise condition for this node splitting? Still, we need to consider the weight two edges in the graph. Consider this graph, uh, this edge, its corresponding edges in the original graph are the following two edges. Then, the weight two edges basically keep the head nodes of the two uh, two edges that merging. So basically that means that the edge will keep the node D and F merged. Similarly, let's consider the other way to edge in the graph and its corresponding edges in the original graph. Similarly, the weight to edge keeps the two head node A and C merging. So basically, the precise condition for the node splitting is that we will iterate over all the outgoing edges with weight greater than or equal to 2, and then the algorithm knows what nodes should keep merged together, and that also decides whether we can split the node. Then our dynamic decision algorithm can split nodes precisely with no redundant computation. For the complexity of the algorithm, we basically exploit a key relation between the original graph and the merge graph. That is, the edge number in the merge graph is at most linear to the node number in the input graph. With this uh, small relation, we can show our algorithm has a ON complexity dynamic edge insertions and the ON alpha N complexity for edge deletions. In this work, we also implement our proposed dynamic algorithms and evaluate its effectiveness in the experiments. We compare our proposed algorithm to the naive dynamic, uh, naive dynamic algorithm, which simply recompute everything from scratch using the static diagrage building algorithm. In addition, we specify the diagrage ability using data log rules and compare our algorithm to a state-of-the-art data log solver, DD log, in two different modes. In the first mode, we use the incremental support of the D-Log solver. In the other mode, we adopt the naive update, which simply recompute everything using the D-Log solver. For the experiment, we feed the algorithm three different types of edge update sequences. The first type of sequences is the edge ins uh, incremental settings that only contains edge insertion updates for the sequence. The sequence starts from the empty graph, and all the edges of the graph are randomly inserted into the into uh, in the sequence. The decremental sequence setting contains only edge deletions. It starts with a complete graph, and all the edges are randomly deleted uh, in the uh, in in the random order in the random order. Then the mixed sequence is basically contains edge insertions and deletions in a random order. We start with a partial graph, and the edges are randomly inserted at the delete. We evaluate the algorithm using two client analysis, one for the data dependence analysis, and another for an alias analysis. The first research question is to evaluate the performance of the proposed dynamic algorithms against the incremental data log solver. So our algorithm is actually more than 10 times faster in the absolute in terms of absolute learning time than the incremental data log solver, which shows that our proposed algorithm is very efficient in practice. The second research question is to explore the speed up 
of the proposed algorithms against its corresponding naive update approaches. The proposed algorithms achieved more than two magnitudes of speed up compared to the naive approach, which recompute everything from scratch in all three different types of settings. To better understand the speed up ratios, we also compare the speed up of our proposed algorithm against the naive update and the speed up of the incremental data log comparing against the naive data log. The proposed algorithm achieves around two times more speed up, even though our proposed algorithm have a faster absolute learning time than the incremental data log solver. The last research question focused on the scalability of the proposed dynamic algorithms. Here is a figure uh, demonstrating how the relative running time changes as more and more edges inserted into the graph. As we can see, uh, the running time of the proposed algorithm, a proposed algorithm does not increase uh, as the graph gets larger. However, the running time of the DB log increases much faster uh, as the graph gets larger and larger. This shows that for edge insertions, our uh, edge insertion algorithm is much more scalable than the DB log. The next figure shows how the relative running time changes as more and more edges get deleted from the graph for detrimental sequences. As we can see, the running time of our proposed algorithm decreases much slower than the DB log as the graph gets smaller. These two figures basically shows the proposed algorithm is much more scalable than DB log in both edge insertions and deletions. In conclusion, we proposed a novel dynamic algorithm for bidirectional diverticulate problem. The proposed algorithm has asymptotic faster running time than the optimal static algorithm for bidirectional diverticulate. We also implement and evaluate the proposed algorithm. The experiment shows that the proposed algorithm is efficient and scalable in practice. That's all for the presentation. Thank you. I'm happy to take any questions about this one. Okay, uh, thank you, Yuan Bo, for the presentation. Uh, we have a couple of minutes for the questions and answers. Any questions from the audience? Thank you very much for that talk. Wait, where did the speaker go? Oh, he's online. Sorry. Uh, I forgot. My question is, um, how in your evaluation, how do you, um, I don't know, figure out which edges to add or delete, uh, you know, as you do this kind of incremental thing? Are these like randomly chosen in the in the graph or, or, or what? Or, or do you like delete statements in the program and look at the corresponding edits in the graph? Can you just say a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I think that's a very good question. We also considered uh, have, uh, we also considered that during our experiment. So basically, as we uh, as we shown that there are basically three different types of uh, uh, set of sequences in our experiment. For the first two different types of sequences are relatively clear because for incremental sequence, we we just uh, start with the empty graph and uh, all of the edges will be inserted. Uh, basically all the edges the program will be considered just in the random order and uh, similarly for the documental one is set with a complete graph and all the edges will be randomly uh, deleted. In the third case, it's relatively trickier because we want both insertions and the deletions uh, interleaved in the random order. But we don't want to like create some artificial edges because if you truly generate random edges, for example, you randomly choose a no, two nodes, and to randomly choose an edge label, that specific edge may does not make any sense in, in the actual program. So what we do is that we start uh, with a partial graph. That means, for example, we uh, we have a graph that has the, we take off randomly 20% of the original edges, and we build a pool for the edges. And when we, when we 
we basically want them to choose an insertion and the deletion. If we choose an insertion, we just insert an edge in the pool. So that, that basically guarantee that the edge inserted are meaningful. And also, if we delete an edge, that, that edge will also go into the pool. So basically, that's how we do the edge insertions and deletions. Okay, thanks. Uh, any other questions from the audience? Hi, uh, thanks Yan Bo, um, for the talk. Uh, I, I'm curious, you, so you mentioned the specific case of um, edge deletion and insertion. Um, uh, do you ha could you speculate uh, what, whether this approach would work on more general types of uh, graph grammars? And, um, and substitution rules, because I know uh, for some classes of these, it can be very difficult uh, to, to determine, uh, uh, undecidable, essentially. So, so um, have you thought about this use case? And, and could you speculate on some applications uh, more generally? Thanks. Okay. So I think the question is that uh, whether this this approach may like, generalize to a more general grammar instead of just a uh, bike. Uh, I think that's first, like that's a definitely good question. I think uh, in this world, uh, our, our problem is a little bit uh, trickier because for, for static algorithm of fiber to divergibility, it, it is already a very fast algorithm because it's almost a, a specific linear. So what we do is that we exploit the special properties of uh, bidirectional divergibility. So I think uh, in, in in that sense, this problem, this problem is relatively the, the problem that we explore um, is relatively um, hard to directly generalize to uh, a more general grammar. But I think uh, some of the ideas maybe involve the equivalent class, and I'm not sure whether that idea will will be useful in general. I think that will be a very good future that I can just thank you for it. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, any other questions from the audience? Uh, okay, we have uh, questions from the remote um, participant, uh, Chen Peng Huang, and his question is, how can we apply the approach in the real world analysis for example, a commit can change multiple lines, creating or deleting multiple edges, and how to apply the approach to achieve the best efficiency sequentially or consider the relationship of the the mode the mode. Uh, so I think it is like a more practical, it will be a more practical situation. I think it may differ for different projects. You probably need to tune a little bit. But I think of, at least for insertions, it's basically, I think I don't think you will apply it uh, sequentially because the algorithm basically supports that you insert all the edges into the problem and just run it. It's, you don't need to like, apply it uh, sequentially. But uh, for the deletions, I guess you will, you will, uh, you will apply it sequentially. Uh, otherwise, the, otherwise, I think the algorithm need to trick a little bit to fit the for for the for the um, basically patch of deletions, so I think for deletions we need to apply the sequential. But anyway, I think it's much significantly faster than the basically compared to everything. It's super efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, that will conclude the first talk. Once again, thank you for the presentation. So let's move on to the next talk. Okay.